Well, we're here at Dig Stock 9, and it's about to begin. We are a couple minutes away from it starting. Um, I'm here with uh, Amy, and checking out where Sue and Becky are. They'll be here hopefully soon. And uh, we're just getting ready. We're going to hit one of the house sites marked on the map and hopefully find some great stuff. I'll be back with my first good find. Oh, here's my first official pool tab of dig stock. I'm sure there'll be more to come, but nice solid signal. Gotta dig them. Just gotta dig them. All right, I just dug my first coin. Nothing too spectacular because it is a memorial penny. But that's a good sign. Coins are here. All right, I got my first decent find. I've pulled a couple pennies and I thought I was getting a penny. And I did get a penny, although, let me get this in a nice light there. This is what they call an Indian head penny. Yeah, I'll take that. That's a nice one. It's in decent shape. It's funny that they call these Indian head pennies because it's actually Lady Liberty with a headdress on. But, yeah, let me see the back there. Oh yeah, the back's in nice shape too. All right, I'm on the board. Let's go, we need more coins. Silver would be nice. All right, Sue just got a really nice hit here. So we are in Pine Top, and she's got some kind of token that says Pine Top on it. That's the area we're in. I don't know what this is going to be, but that is... Oh, I know what this is. What? Come on, Sue. Lucky? Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, exactly. This is one of those lucky arcade tokens. Yeah, good luck. Where you punch in your... You know, you punch in your name or whatever. You're going to get a name off of this. Oh. If, if you're lucky, right? If yeah. they punched in their name, they probably put their, their hometown in a name. And there's going to be in the center, either good like luck. good luck or there's a couple, Soldier. like a shamrock or an American flag. Yeah. Okay. Nice, Sue. All that's, right. That's... What do we got here? Nice dog tag, it looks like. Do you, do you, I, I can't read all the stuff on there, but is it? I'm, I'm assuming that's local here, right? Oh, let's find out. Let's see if I can. Here, I'll tell you what. It ain't like going to hurt it if I put this mm -hmm. little brush on there a little bit. Vaccination rabies. Looks like a 95 maybe. No. Not super old, but no. cool when you find no, stuff in the 40s. area. No, it's a 40s. Oh, it's a 40s. Oh, yeah, yeah. 1944. Oh, yeah. 1944. Yeah. Nice find, man. It's older than me. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's in a little rough shape, but I believe I just found a lipstick container. You can see uh, the top there is rounded. I mean, this thing is squashed down, but the top is rounded. And what leads me to believe this is a lipstick container is I found them before where they have these like vertical lines on them. A little hard to see there maybe, but yeah. Um, yeah it looks like it would have been a small one, but I'll take it. But uh, hopefully we're gonna find some uh, nice coins here soon. Oh my gosh, these dogs. <laughs> What do you got here, Sue? I got oh. a little ring. I can't tell what it's made of or anything. It's oh, just but look, small. there's a design on it, right? Yeah, almost like a snakeskin type. Well, X's, I think. Oh, sweet, Sue. That's amazing. Yeah, you are lucky here thing. at Digstock with your rings. Rings and locks. And locks. Locks. All right. I got silver. A... Becky, you're next. Silver. You're I pulling in silver. Quarter. You got a quarter? Yeah. Do you? Oh. Ooh. Ooh, I'm, I'm 26 and a cents and ahead. Yeah. Well, there ahead. you go. Don't spend that in one place. I won't. Right. I'll try not to. <laughs> There's a beautiful pond here. There's uh, definitely some uh, beaver activity out there. They got themselves a little dam going there. Oh, I hear some noise. I think I just heard a beaver. I think I heard one too. Oh yeah. yeah, and there's some ripples in the water up here.
and copperheads. Oh. Uh, water moccasins, cop or, or cottonmouth. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to go in that beaver dam. I'll yeah, tell you that no, much. No, and you can see it. Did you see its little entrances to get down? Like here. right here, yeah. Yeah, there are a couple. That one, there's a deep one. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the yeah, look, yeah. little trails here. Amy's yeah. pointing out. Look at that. That's something. I love it. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I think I just heard a tail flap way, way over there. Yeah, was, there's ripples coming from yeah. over that direction. Yeah. Yeah, I, love, I was like, man, man this is pretty here. House. Well, you know what we're gonna do, Amy? We're not. No, we're gonna get a really nice photo right here. Oh, okay. I was like, we're, we're not gonna swim. No, we're not gonna <laughs> swim. All right. We're gonna what? All right, let's get that photo here. Okay. Ooh, check out this nice find that just popped oh, out of the hole. Oh, I'm jealous. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I do like those. Yeah. I have no way to know how old these things Maybe are. I guess people I know, but... I finding them. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, let's hold, oh, I'm jealous. Let's hold this awesome. guy up to the light here and see if we can... Oh, without marble. blinding you here. Oh, there we go. I'm jealous. That'll make marble. my day. All right. All right, I just got um, what I believe is going to be a ring, uh, not gold, not silver. Um, let me show you what we got here. Um, does appear to be broken, um, but I do believe there's going to be a ring. Now, I was just starting to clean it up, and I got my magnifying glass out. There might be something on there. So let me clean this up a little bit better and see if there's anything. Um, I thought I saw some stars maybe showing through. But that just might be my eyes. Let me let me clean it up, and if it's anything interesting, I'll be back. Um, but yeah, I'll take that. All right, let's keep going. Well, it's pretty easy to get fooled when you pull stuff out of the ground. I thought I had a coin here. I was thinking a nickel, but if you look at the bottom side there, you could see this is an old key. Eh, I would rather it an old nickel, but we'll take it. Oh, where'd you go with that? Get that back out, Amy. Oh, sorry, I'm like putting it away. <laughs> what do you got there, Amy? Nice little the button. The cow H, nice little button. Not terribly Whoop, old, but take it. old button. It's a nice. first start. I'll nice. take it. All right, I just found an item. I don't know what it is. I thought it was an accordion read at first, but um, with the magnifying glass out, it actually says Ford on it right there. I do not know what this is, but I'm going to say something related to Ford to a car, but uh, we'll take it. I'll have to do a little research on this when I get home. All right, bye. All right, I just found this button, dropped it, and found it again. Um, there's a little bit of uh, like rusting on it, and I believe it says Crown and something or other i don't think it's going to be super old and it very well may be just for like jeans i think 1900s for sure i mean this is going to be 1800s old but i'll take that not a bad find at all all right hopefully find some more buttons and maybe some coins this is a peculiar first find for me first time i've ever found one of these i'll hold this up and see if you can uh you might need to be a little bit older like I am to know what one of these things are here. Let me show you what we got. Now it's broken. And there's a little bit of dirt and there should be a hole in the center there, but... That is a really peculiar find. It's not metal, it's plastic. But for those that don't know, I'm going to have to look up the name. I think there's an actual name for this, but I don't know. But this is for uh, uh, 45 Records. So, yeah, this would have gone in the center of those. Uh, to allow you to play them on a on a regular record player. But, nope, that's what that is. Really odd find now. All right, I'll be back. Well, this is uh, the second one of these that I found today. Um, kind of interesting. I don't find them a whole lot. I mean, they're common, they're around, but uh, but let me show you what I got here. Yeah, it's the second marble I found today. And this one's you could see has been hit at some point or broken and what's interesting is you can almost see the swirl let me pick that up off the ground you can almost see the swirl from the making of this marble 
you know, I guess these uh, glass would have been swirled to give that effect. And there in the center, you could see that swirl coming about. But yeah, I don't know, a marble kind of day. All right, maybe I'll find more. All right, I just got a, uh, yeah, it's cleaned off here. I think that's gonna be a, a garter clip. Yeah, interesting little find. I'll take it. All right. Now I've just pulled out a button. Um, and if it is a button, I'm not 100% sure if it is. I mean, it looks like there was a spot for the shank right there and then just kind of a plain front. But if this is a button, this is like, one of the heaviest buttons I've ever found. Yeah, I don't know. We'll get it, you know, get it cleaned up. I don't know if there's gonna be any marks on there or writing on it, but yeah, if that's a button, that's pretty cool. That's pretty hefty. All right. Well, we're on a, a house site. 100% there's bricks, a lot of iron signals, and I think this may be a pretty big house. Um, we were told that there was a plantation here. I just found a wheat scent, and then I just found this. An old key that is bent up pretty good there, you could see. Um, but interesting little find. But hopefully there's more coins around here. I think I may have moved to what may be the front of the house, so hopefully there'll be some good stuff around here. All right, let's keep looking. All right, it's day two here at Digstock. Um, super early, we got here, started at seven. Uh, we made our way to actually what is an unmarked location where there's uh, uh, definitely a home site here. Uh, bricks all over the place, uh, it's not marked on their map. So you don't know about every home when they're, uh, when they're doing the research on these places, but um, I just dug my first good signal um, and it is going to be a spoon. Yeah, and this is going to be a silver plated. You could see down here some of the silver plating on it, um, but most of that is gone. So nothing precious or valuable, but interesting just the same when you're finding stuff like this. That's like a great, great sign of good things to come. Um, we hit the spot yesterday at the very end of the day, and we found a couple wheat scents. Um, and but the the best part was we were getting a lot of signals, and there were very few, if any, dig holes here. So this is the place we want to be today. We're going to concentrate here and hopefully find some really, really good stuff. So um, I'll be back hopefully with more than just a bent up old spoon, but this is a great sign. Boy, someone who lived here really liked Pepsi because I keep finding Pepsi tops. A little bit of a pain because they ring up like a nice uh, large scent, but you just got to dig them. I think I'm going to have a little Pepsi cap collection before my day is done here, but... Uh, hopefully that will turn into a large scent collection. We'll see. Well, it appears I am on the spoons today. There is a second spoon that I found a bit mangled up. Not sure you're going to be able to get any soup delivered to your mouth with this thing. But a good sign all in all. And hopefully there's more to come. I just found a little piece of a toy car here. So just, you know, it shows the age and and how like people have lived here over the years. Um, this I would think is probably like 70s, 80s probably, just a guess. But you know, I was finding those spoons, those are much earlier. So, uh, and we were finding wheat scents here. So um, just shows that how people have lived here over the many years. And hopefully we're going to find some old stuff here soon. All right. All right, I'm a couple of feet away from the last hole I dug, maybe like 10 feet or so. And I just found another piece of uh, that same car. I think I can tell by the green paint there. Yep, hit by a plow or something over the years and just spread out. Um, I'm afraid I might find a couple more pieces around here, but... 
Oh, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to put this car back together. And my fear is confirmed. There's a third piece, so I keep going. I'm just getting the same area. I'm just going to keep finding more pieces of this car. <laughs> Hello. 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 Look at you. You're just. You're such a cute girl. You are. Sure. There you go. Arr, get in there real good. Get in there real good. Arr, arr, arr. Oh, you're such a cute girl. Yes. This is Lucy, I believe, right? Arr, go get him. <laughs> I wish my dog would come out and they'll detect him, but Charlie, uh, if you've seen Charlie on out uh, with a walk, out for a walk with Charlie, uh, yeah. He's a really good dog, but I don't think he'd uh, hang around me in a field like this. That's pretty cool. Becky just found a pretty cool token. Can you read it? I can't read it. <laughs> Something check with the we check with each sale. Person's returning first or second. Something 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 gold. And then on this side it says Rocky Mount on the bottom. Oh, which is where we are. It's where we are. Nice. I found a thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Sue here's just uh, found another token. Good for Good for congratulations. Hey. And Lu Lucy's checking it out. Hey, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> wow. Good for five cents <laughs> each. I think it's a cigar. <laughs> you All go. right. <laughs> Sue, you're gonna you're have gonna a cigar smoke tonight. You later. <laughs> <laughs> a celebratory cigar. Great. Nice. I think it absolutely says cigar. <laughs> That's a good one. Awesome. I got tokens. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think there's a urine in the back. Oh, that would oh. be. Oh. Sue for the win. Sue gets a rip here today. I found two spoons. Does that count for anything? Yes. <laughs> I got almost everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> oh my gosh, you got the plumbing there. Oh, just wait. I have to, oh. Oh yeah, finding copper strips like that. There. That's oh my it. gosh, yes. <laughs> 31525 is 31, what it says. Oh. What a riot. Nice. Nice. All right, I'm on something good here, finally. Let me scan across here. Do you see what I found? Yeah, yes. Yes. So it's feeling, uh, feeling a little light and it came up, came up kind of low, so I don't think it's gonna be uh, sterling silver. But you never know till you get it cleaned up. Yeah, it's feeling really light, but and silver is usually a pretty uh, pretty heavier and harder to crush. But it could be silver. But there's some writing around this, so this is probably going to be an advertisement thimble. Let me get this cleaned up and see what we got here. Yes, a nice, nice find. I will take this. Yes. All right. <laughs> Got my hood on, it's a little chilly out here today, but yeah, this is definitely an advertisement thimble. Um, I'll get some uh, nice pictures of this um, when I put this video together, but um, if I remember what it says here, it's quite long here, but it says something like, for goodness sake, use Watkin products. And it's something about Watkins, um, use of Watkins products it pays something. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to get it uh, cleaned up. It's it's a long thing there, but yeah, it looks like it's some kind of. Well, it's it's an advertisement thimble for Watkins products. I have no idea what that is. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get that uh, little research done on that. But yeah, I will take an advertisement thimble any day of the week. Yes, super excited. All right. Beautiful. Sue, you got 18, a nice little coin there. 18, I don't know. I can't read it. Oh. You can't read it. It's going to be a little tricky to... I, I do think you're right. I think that's too thin to be an Indian. So that's... 
But it, I don't know. It might be. Looks like maybe a one cent coming through. Also, maybe this is an Indian, yeah. I don't know. I've never seen a whole Indian before. I found one last year down here. Have you? Yeah. Oh. But a lot of the uh, the sharecroppers. Yeah. I mean, they were poor poor. Ah. They'd hold an Indian. So they would, yeah. Yeah. But it is quite thin. I don't know. Isn't that large? That's beautiful. Yes. All right. Well, hopefully we'll be able to make out, out what this is, but that's still cool looking. It it's beautiful. Cool. Yeah. May I see? Yeah. Or did if you've ever been to a dig stock event before, you'll know that they have uh, thousands of acres that you can detect on and constantly checking like uh, where you can go, making sure the boundaries are, making sure you're within the boundaries. Um, I just came with Becky and Sue to another permission. They're uh, Becky's way up there in the... Uh, yellow jacket and Sue's way over there probably can't see her in the video on the red jacket um, these are two home sites over here and um, I just came back this way um, check things out back on the the property I was intrigued by uh, this one tree over here this one that kind of comes out to the right the farthest there um, nice big tree there and um, as I got closer and back here more um, discovering all this ivy growing up these trees here. So that English ivy there, and there's like some, uh, um, what are they called there? Oh, I forget the name of these things. Um, these holly trees, there's a whole bunch of them there. Um, that suggests to me that there was a house site up here that wasn't marked on their maps. And you know, they, they do their best, Digstock does their best to mark where all the uh, houses were on all the different fields that you can detect on. Um, now I did notice back here, there's a couple dig holes back in the tree line there. So we can actually go in the tree line. I was really careful to check the boundaries there. Um, but my suspicion is, my suspicion is there is a home site here somewhere. So I don't see a lot of dig holes out here in the field. I'm going to go and detect around here and see if maybe this was a home site. Um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll find some good stuff. Well, I'm uh, detecting out uh, just off of the tree that over here. Um, pretty quiet in here. Um, my, my gut tells me it looks like there's a small opening behind the tree. That may have been a home site. And that's where like all those holly and ivies are growing. Um, it's just way too dense with uh, thorn bushes and stuff in there. Um, I'm not interested in getting all cut up and having all my clothing sliced up to check that out. Um, but I thought I would poke around outside here um, and uh, hopefully something will pop out here, but there's no iron signals. Um, I usually detect with a uh, iron on so i'm listening for iron and even when i get to a spot a little, a little signal there even when i get to a spot um where there's a lot of iron on i tend to just keep it on um it makes it seem less choppy the way it sounds to have to hear like a little iron growl and then you hear the the sharp signal when you turn the iron off in an iron field you get these really just short little blips that kind of I don't know, I personally just like the iron on, but I know a lot of people turn it off when they get to those iron patches, but. A really, really short, low signal. I'm probably not gonna go for that one. But yeah, I'll keep poking around here and uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, if I'm not finding any hits, um, who knows, maybe I'll just go explore down the this field, see what's down here, and then uh, if nothing else, head back to those home sites up there. All right, hopefully I'll be back with a good find for you. Well, let me point this down a little bit here. You can see the ground as I go. Um, so I mentioned this recently in a short that I did about, um, I try to look for arrowheads while I'm detecting. Um, and uh, 
down here in North Carolina, um, I think they're easier to spot on the ground than they are where I am in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's just rocks everywhere in Pennsylvania. So everything you see, um, it just blends together. But, you know, down here, when you're looking for arrowheads, um, you start finding some flakes. And I'm by no means an expert on this, but um, but I, I do know uh, some of the flakes when I start seeing them. And uh, certainly would like to find some arrowheads here. Um, but here's the question. Like, can you really look for arrowheads and mail detect at the same time? Now, I know people have found them. Um, I was with some uh, people at the last dig stock event that were mail detecting and came back with some arrowhead surface finds that they, that they found while they're detecting. Um, and I'm glued to the ground when I'm mail detecting. I'm constantly looking down, trying to look for hints in the ground. Um, but I don't know. I think they're two different things. Can your mind really do both at the same time? Because um, I get a signal, I just got a little blip of a signal there. And your focus kind of goes from searching the ground and scanning the ground to like concentrating on what that signal was. So I suppose like right now there's not many signals that I'm getting. So I suppose I can kind of like look for arrowheads and and it's more arrowhead looking than metal detecting, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll find an arrowhead here and I'll convince myself that I'm able to do both at the same time. But um, I guess I just have very little luck finding arrowheads while I'm metal detecting. But let me know what you uh, think. And if you're good at doing both at the same time, uh, let me know. Oh, there's a little chirp I'm getting. I don't know if you could see that there, but that's a uh, part of a shotgun shell. That thing is pretty, pretty worn down. Yep. All right. That goes in the junk pouch, but all right, I'm going to keep going and uh, hopefully I'll find either an arrowhead or something good with my detector. We'll see which one comes first. So I just pulled a, I think a, a small piece of lead that was probably some buckshot from a shotgun shell uh, from a shotgun. And, uh, you know, I was so one of the things I love about detecting in uh, North Carolina, is in the areas that we're in here anyway, is just how easy it is to pull or to dig things out of the ground. Um, Pennsylvania, the farmlands I'm on are so rocky. Now what do we got here? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, we haven't been seeing many rocks. Now well, there's one example, but we've got like, you know, big rocks in Pennsylvania that uh, field stones that you have to dig around and through. Uh, to get to your targets and I just noticed um I just noticed coming down here when I got this out of my trunk my shovel here let's see if we can see this here my shovel here is um cracking there pretty good and that's from all those uh yeah all those uh rocks there in Pennsylvania have uh, started cracking this but uh but anyway yeah by the the uh it's just so easy to dig down here I just love uh when you get a target, I'm inspired to dig more targets down here. Um, not that I don't dig a lot in Pennsylvania, but when I'm getting exhausted, um, I might key on the, the good ones. But down here, um, this is, I mean, as you can see, this is just sand. Yeah, this is just sand, easy to dig into. But yeah. All right. I'm going to go find something good. So this is, this here is what it's like to be in one of these, um, very quiet fields, old farm fields here. Get a hit, I don't know if you can see there. 13, 14. Probably gonna be another one of these like little, little beads coming out of a shotgun. They're a little tricky to get out of the ground, so let's see if we can get it on this scoop. They've been taking me like three or four good digs to get. Sometimes you scoop it up and it just rolls right off and then back down in there. Nope, I got it. Yep, right in the center there. Um, let's see what we got.
Yep. That is actually like a small piece of iron. I think because it's so concentrated and a little thick, that's why it was ringing up as high as it was. There might actually be something on the back of that there. Let me see. Might have an idea on this. It's possible that this here is part of a pocket knife. That would be my guess that this is going to be a pocket knife. Um, I think this is like one of the dividers. And that, that piece right there is like brass or copper. And then there's rusted iron here, which I think is one of the blades. So I think this is just a small piece of an old pocket knife. Um, wasn't expecting that, but an interesting find. No, oh, I'm walking along and this scared me for a second there, but uh, yeah, unfortunately there is the carcass of a deer there. Um, looks like it's been there a while because I think all the meat is gone. It's just bone and a little bit of the, the, the fur left. That poor thing. All right, and it looks like it was pretty small. Yeah, it was a young one. All right, we'll let it go. You can see a little debris trail of some of the bones from that deer. There's some rib bones, um, some of the spine over there, and more of the spine there, and then the deer's all the way down there. I gotta believe some uh, vultures had at that thing, or whatever, something pulled it apart. There's some more bones over here. Yeah, quite interesting. All right. Well, this is an interesting find here. Um, I'm not a hunter. Um, there's, I counted one, uh, where's the other one? Two, I think there may have been a third tree stand here somewhere. At least two tree stands like around this field. So they're certainly hunting. And as we just saw, there was a deer carcass over there. Not that I thought that they shot, that was a young deer. Um, but uh, but we know that there's deer that come through here. But I just found this bullet. Um, again, I'm not a hunter, so I really don't know anything about this. But, you know, this is an interesting. I've never seen one like this before. It's metal. It rang up. It looks like there's a copper jacket on it. But there's this green spot in the center. So this is kind of new to me. Um, I'm not sure if that's lead at the base. Looks like it's lead. It has that white patina, but I'm really not sure what that that green spot in the center is. If anyone knows what kind of bullet this is um, or what material that's in the center, um, please leave a comment. I would love to learn a little bit more about this uh, item I just found. Thanks. So, talked about this before. The reason I mail detect, or the reason I started, simply was my wife bought me a mail detector. And I was hooked pretty much right away. Um, but there's many reasons why we detect. And I could tell you that in this event, um, so far, there's a little bit of day left here. So far, I haven't found anything fantastic. I'm not disappointed in a couple of interesting finds that I had. Um, and that's just the way the, the hobby goes. You go out and you have really good days. You go out and you don't have great days. Um, it's just something you have to do again and again. Um, it's a definitely a uh, a game of patience, persistence, and just devoting a lot of time to it. And over time, that's how you get good finds. Um, so the best metal detectorist and the best metal detector out there um, won't find something unless it goes over it. So you got to spend the time and and. Uh, you gotta find good places to go, and um, some days you just have better luck than others. And that's all it comes down to. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm here uh, with some friends, and I had a great time um, with these people, and that's a large part of what the hobby can be for many people: is just getting together with people that you see once a year or twice a year. And just catching up with them and, you know, bragging a little bit about what you found and and sharing in the excitement of what they found um, since you last seen them. And um, and also, you know, it's uh, the end of February here. 
and oh, I just got a signal. <laughs> it's the end of February here, and I'm down um, in, it's, it's like 50 degrees out, but what a beautiful day it is here in North Carolina. It's been nice in Pennsylvania. I've had a little bit of snow this year, but this is just great weather. So if absolutely nothing else, what a day to be out and just doing what I love doing, whether I find good stuff or not. Um, but let me go dig this one here. Probably going to be some more canned slaw. Yeah, it's got that chirp about it. I'm actually not going to dig that one. And the more I swing over it, the worse it sounds. So, um, but yeah, um, hopefully I get to end the event on a good find or two here. And I'm just going to keep going because that's what I do. Um, but yeah, um, if you uh, detect for some other reason, um, I suppose the biggest reason is you want to find amazing treasures, and I certainly do too. Um, but if you have a different reason why you mail detect, please leave a comment. I'd love to know more about uh, what draws people to the hobby. It's quite literally like finding a needle in a haystack. This tiny little lead buckshot here, part of, uh, I'm guessing, a shotgun. You know, so multiple of these have been impacted in a shotgun. Tiny little bead. And look at this just enormous field that I'm in. <laughs> it's just amazing that you stumble upon this and you're able to dig it and pull it out. But these detectors, I mean, they work great. They, Once you're on metal, you get a solid hit. Um, I will say these things are a little tricky to get out of the ground though because they're uh they're tiny and they fall around they fall off your shovel and uh and then they they elude your pinpointers as well because they're so small but um but if you know what you're doing you can pop them out and obviously get them and throw them in your bag all right all right i just called my friends over um it's got a flat button uh we were told that they were finding flat buttons up here um and well i found one and this one actually is nice because it has a pattern in there. I think this would have been gold gilt at some point because there's some, yeah, you can see some very faint gold gilt still on there. Shank is still on the back. So yeah, I called them over so we can detect around here because um, this was probably gonna be a good spot. All right, let's see if we can find some more. Do it. Becky does indeed have a button. Yeah. Button, button. There's no writing on that, is there? There is on the back. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. This is the flat button field. Apparently. Yes. Ah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at this uh, pipe stem that Amy found. Oh. That is yeah. pretty cool. Nice. Now, are you thinking that's Native American or colonial? I'm thinking it's colonial. Maybe it was traded with the Native Americans, but I imagine it's colonial. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. All right, I just dug a nice old fork here. I'll put that with the two spoons that I found earlier this weekend. All right, I'll take it. So very, very often when I find something of interest, I'll start to circle around um, right from the spot where I found it and, you know, somewhat grid, but um, doing so, I just found the uh, other half of this uh, fork here, the handle, which is actually, there we go, which is actually kind of a good thing because this will, um, if I want to do a little research into this, will help me much easier um, identify the age on it. And there's a little fancy on there, a little design on the top part of that fork there. So yeah, I'm super glad that I'm doing that. And I was gonna take my time around here regardless just to see what else I could find. All right, I just got uh, my first button of the event. It's been slow for me as far as buttons. Let me get this, uh, I just dropped this button. <laughs> if only there was a way I could find it. Let me go find this, I just dropped this thing. Wow.